People's Invitational Match Game Championships in Chicago, USA. This year, Eric's title was on the line in the second annual Blacklock 10,000, when, in a greatly expanded tournament, 86 men and women from every state in Australia competed for the championship. 57 different bowling centres sent area and zone champions to Sydney from a record 34,762 entries. In four days of rugged tournament play, the field of 86 was narrowed to 30 finalists. 15 men to challenge Eric Jang, and 13 women competing with women's defending champion Tina Hutchinson. Following preliminary rounds at Kensington and St. Leonard's centres, the finals in both divisions moved to St. Leonard's for the deciders. Sponsored by Blacklock Industries Proprietary Limited, manufacturers in Australia of world-famous Brunswick bowling equipment, the 1963 National Singles Championship follows the format of the World's Invitational. The 49 men and 37 women qualifiers won their spots in the Blacklock 10,000 by taking out championships in local tournaments all over Australia. The preliminary rounds called for 15 games from the men and 12 for the women. And in the finals, the men rolled 32 games and the women met in 28. It demanded real endurance. In a few minutes, we'll take you to St. Leonard's for the thrilling last games in the men's division. But first, let's look at some of the excitement that preceded the opening of play. Now, here they come, from all over Australia, champions in the bowling world. In a precision timed airlift, contenders were flown from every capital city, from points as far distant as Mount Isa, Broken Hill, Hobart and Perth. This is the Victorian contingent, 27 strong. Queensland sent 10 champions, Western Australia and South Australia four each, three from the Australian Capital Territory and two from Tasmania. The home state of New South Wales had 36 men and women in line for the titles. The interstate contenders were greeted at Mascot Airport by Sydney contestants and many friendly rivals renewed friendships made in the 1962 championship. 20 of last year's 32 finalists were back again for the roll-off this year. Entries in the tournament spiralled from over 6,000 in 1962 to nearly 35,000 this year, probably a world record and an indication of the phenomenal growth of the sport in Australia. Of the 86 competitors who qualified for the preliminaries, more than half were due to be eliminated during the four days of play. The finalists represented the Australian bowling fraternity at its best. A motorcade through Sydney set the scene for four days of entertainment and four days of tough competition. Around the festivities, dinners, the reunions of old friends, all lent a carnival atmosphere to the national event. Sydney siders watched with interest as the cars with banners flying threaded their way through the city, proclaiming the presence of the champions. The culmination of some nine months of competition play was about to begin. Now, at St. Leonard's Bowl, opening ceremonies in the finals saw a capacity crowd welcome the contestants. Top qualifiers for the finals were Queensland's Bill George and Victoria's Alma O'Halloran. Defenders Hutchinson and Jang were introduced, as were all the finalists. Charles, there is David Green from Victoria, and there's Joe Vello from Wollongong. And that's Pearl Sullivan from Victoria. And there's John Fitch from New South Wales. And Brian Eagle from Victoria. Tournament chairman, Joe Farina, welcomes them all. The 
director, Bernie Levine, calls for the practice ball that gets the show on the road. In a minute now, the games that made all the difference in the 1963 Blacklock 10,000. Holidays coming up. Have you arranged the details? Yes, there's hotels, motels, lodges, guest houses. Which way are you going to travel? How much do you want to pay? Do you know the best times to go? What are you going to do when you get there? Help! Don't worry. Do what I did. Call in the ANSET a a Holiday Service. They've got the travel world at their fingertips. They'll arrange everything for you. And this service is free. Thinking of holidays? Think ANSET a a Holiday Service first. We're now in the final seconds of a tenth battle in the women's division, and it's been anybody's tournament all the way. Here's Alma O'Halloran showing the form that kept her in the lead in her division, until another Victorian, Pearl Sullivan, never out of the race, turned on the devastating bowling that made her women's champion. In defeating Alma in the last round, Pearl bowled the women's high score of the tournament, a sizzling 249. By clinching the title, Pearl won the right to represent Australia at the World's Invitational, as well as £500 in cash, and a flight around the world by Qantas V-Jet with VIP treatment all the way. Pearl is a Tasmanian by birth, now living in Melbourne. Bowling takes most of her life now. In fact, she bowls every day as an instructress at the Plaza Bowl, Melbourne. She came third in the 10,000 last year, and she made no mistakes in winning it this time. again. The defender performed magnificently to lift himself from 11th to second place in the second day's play. Even with the last mathematical chance of winning gone, he continues to be a crowd pleaser, showing top form, and at this stage he looks like finishing in fourth place. But he holds an average a point higher than the one that took out the title last year. Another indication of the new level of bowling ability in Australia, barely two years after its introduction. Now expert Joe Farina will call the shots in the final last game of the men's finals when the three top contenders go after the big ones. Bob Bashon of Queensland, Nick Bubnew of Victoria and John Fitch of New South Wales are the top three of 49 contestants and they're shooting for a huge cash dividend provided by Blacklock Industries and Eater Food. Not long to go now as they fight it out in the final game of the entire tournament. This is it, Bob Bashon bowling first. And here's Bob Vachon in the first frame of this final game. Bob releases his ball, goes in a little bit too light, and leaves a 10-pin standing. It looked like a good pocket hit, but it was a fraction light, and Bob is shooting at the 10-pin and covers it for the spare in the first frame. Vachon now shooting in the second frame. His ball crosses on a head pin, and he leaves a 3-pin spare standing. Bob covers his 3-pin spare. The ball had it covered all the way, so at the end of two frames, Bob has 17 in the first frame on a spare in the second. Here comes handsome Vic Bubnu of Victoria. Vic's ball was way outside. He was outside of his target. He threw a bad ball that time. It didn't come up to the head pin. He leaves a 3-pin spare standing. Vic now shooting on his second ball in the first frame, and he has a spare covered to start this final game off with a spare. Vic was in the tournament last year, Joe. Yes, he bowled very well last year, and he was probably the top bowler in the qualifying stages this year, Charles. Here's Vic shooting his uh, first ball in the second frame. He was almost in trouble. He was almost in trouble, but the five pin went down. He pinned nine for his first ball. 
He is now shooting the second ball in the second frame. He takes his approach, here's the release, he's got the angle, it's good all the way for a spare. Vic Bubnu has a spare in the second frame, that'll give him 19 in the first on a spare in the second. And here comes John Fitch, the man who has been leading in the finals of this tournament. John crosses a head pin and carries a strike. John starts the final game out and throws pressure right on the other ballers, starting with a strike in the final game. He's now coming up for his second frame. John's ball went high on a head pin. Little too high on a head pin, he leaves a six pin standing in this second frame. I like the way John stares the pins down, he's very deliberate. He concentrate on, concentrates on every move, Charles. He covers that spare, and John has a spare in the second frame on a strike in the first to pin 20 in the first frame. Here comes Bob Vachon for his third frame. These boys can't afford an open frame at this crucial stage. Bob buries it in the pocket, now here they go. Bob comes in with a strike in the third frame, and he is coming up for his fourth frame now. That ball is going on the cross, a very bad ball for Vachon. The ball crossed the head pin going away, and he leaves the five pin standing. These are very tired boys. They've been bowling a rugged competition for four days. Bob's ball oh, didn't no. take the hook. It didn't take the hook, and he missed the five pin. Bob's he's going to have to trouble. work hard now. Yes, he's in trouble now, Charles. He's got to really go to pull this game out. Here comes uh, Vic Bubnu. Vic is working on the spare, coming up for his third frame. And a beautiful release. The ball is buried in a pocket. He drove it home for a strike. Strike all the way. Vic Bubnu with a strike in the third. Now it coming up for his fourth frame. A very easy motion. He crosses a head pin. Beautiful pin action down there. He has a wonderful roll on that ball, and he has a double. Throwing pressure right on John Fitch. Here comes John for his third frame. John releases the ball. He goes high on a head pin for a strike. John carried out very well with some action off the kickboards. Here he comes for his fourth frame, and he buries it in for another strike. Now they're hot. They're real hot, and how they can continue to go at this pace, I'll never know. They've been doing this for four days. Here's Bob Vachon. Bob had an open frame in the fourth frame. He's now coming up for the fifth frame, and he must go well from here on out. Bob takes his approach. He releases. His ball goes high on the head pin. He was almost in trouble again. Bob Vachon having a little trouble at this stage. He's got to go big from here on out. He has a two-pin spare standing. Bob's an American, by the way, Joe. Yes, he comes from California, Charles. Here's Bob's spare shot in this fifth frame, and he covers his spare. Bob has 65 in the fifth, uh, or excuse me, 65 in the fourth on a spare in the fifth. Now shooting in the sixth frame, he's got to get going. He's in all the way with that ball. That ball was buried knee-deep in there. He has a strike in the sixth frame. Vic Bubno now coming up for his fifth frame. Vic is bowling very well. He's working on a double. He takes his time. Here's his approach. His ball is crossing the head pin, and Vic's in trouble. Vic is in trouble on his shot. He has a split, the five, and the ten pin standing. A very hard shot, and he cannot afford to have an open frame. Vic must try to convert this shot, and it is very hard. Here is his release. And he covered it. What Vic covered it. Shot. How about that, Charles? That's shot. shooting. Here's boys have been shooting for four days and still can pull shots like that. Vic covered that split, and he's now bowling in the sixth frame. He covers eight on the first ball. He has two pins standing, which gives Vic a total of 105 in the fifth with this second ball coming up in the sixth frame. How did Vic fare in the qualifying stages, Joe? Vic was the hottest bowler in the country in the qualifying stages. He won four tournaments in Victoria. Here's Vic's second shot in the sixth frame, and he spares. That was a beautiful shot, a beautiful piece of work by Vic Bubnu in converting that split shot to keep him right in contention. Here's old Big John again. Yes, tireless John concentrating on every move he makes out there. Here's his first ball in the fifth frame. John pins nine. John is working on a double. He pinned nine on that first ball. Here's his second shot. And he covers his spare, which puts him one pin up on Vic Bubnu. John now going into the sixth frame. He threw a very bad ball that time. John was way outside to the right. He leaves the one, two, and eight pin standing. Here is his second ball, and he covers a spare. No mistakes there. No, he's got everything covered on these spare shots. They can't afford to have an open frame. Here comes Bob Vachon up for his seventh frame. Bob, the dark horse in this tournament. He's taking his time. 
He too is very deliberate. These are very tired boys. Bob releases the ball. And he's a little light on that head pin. He pins seventh for the frame. He has the two, four, and five standing. He lines up his shot, the release. And he has it covered. There's no doubt about it. As soon as he let go, you knew the spare was covered. That gives Bob 105 in the sixth on the spare in the seventh, and he strikes in the eighth frame. How about that, Charles? He's coming back after that open frame in the fourth. He's been trying all the way. Here comes Vic Bubno, the handsome boy from Victoria. Vic goes in high on the head pin, and he leaves a three pin standing. Vic has 124 in the sixth, and he's ready for his second ball in the seventh frame of the final game of this very rugged four day tournament. He took a deep breath that time. He has his angle lined up. He takes his approach. He's on target. It's covered all the way, and Vic has a spare in the seventh frame. Here comes Vic for his eighth frame. He takes his time. Vic has been going very, very well. Victoria can be proud of this boy. He releases. It's high on the head pin, but they're going down. He's got nine of them on that first ball. On his spare shot, he has the pin covered, and Vic has 143 in the seventh frame with a spare in the eighth, and here comes John Fitch for his seventh frame. It's interesting to note how the finalists have finished up, uh, Joe. We have a finalist from Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland. And all doing very well for the respective states, Charles. Their states can be proud of these three boys. Here comes John working on the spare. He's shooting in the seventh frame. And he buried it in there. John Fitch comes in with a strike in the seventh frame. That gives John 126 in the sixth frame on a strike in the seventh. And he's coming up for his eighth frame right now. Across on a head pin, he carried eight pins down with two standing. He will throw his second ball at this spare shot right now. And he has it covered. He's very deliberate in his shooting. At the end of the eighth frame, John Fitch is leading Vic Bubnu by four pins, and he's leading Bob Vashon by 12. And here's Bob in his ninth frame. And is buried in there. Bob Vashon is now on a double. He has really come back since he had the error back in the fourth frame. Here's Bob Vashon throwing in the tenth frame. He goes high on the head pin and pins nine for the frame. Bob Vashon has 174 in the ninth frame, and he covers his spare on a 10th frame. This tired boy has one more ball to go before he can sit down and take a well-deserved rest. Here is his final ball. It crosses the head pin, and he carried a strike. Beautiful action off the kickback. He carried out a strike to finish with 194. Here is Vic Bubnu bowling in his ninth frame. Vic pins nine on his first ball to give him 162 in the eighth frame, and he is now shooting his second ball in the ninth frame. And Vic covers a spare. He had it covered all the way. Here is his first ball in the tenth frame, and he gets a strike. Vic Bubnu is still in there. He has 182 in the ninth on a strike in the tenth, and he pins nine on the first ball after the strike. Here is Vic's final ball. And he packs a spare for a good 2-0-2 game, his last game in his grueling 47-game match. Here is John Fitch. John bowling in the ninth frame. He's working on a spare. Very deliberate. He releases. It's a strike. John Fitch is in there with a strike. A beautiful strike in the ninth frame. John Fitch needs nine pins to win this championship. This could be the winning ball. Yes, Charles, this can be it. The crowd is very, very tense. John, very deliberate, very tired. He's concentrating on every move he makes. Here it is. He takes the approach. It's all over. It's all over. John Fitch has just scored a strike in the 10th frame. He is the new champion. John Fitch of New South Wales clinches the 1963 National Championship. He is bowling his final two balls, but it is all over. He is a very tired and happy boy. There's the final ball, and there is the champion in a well-deserved victory.
This is one of the mighty turbofan engines of the revolutionary Qantas 707 V-Jet. Because they are 25% more powerful, Qantas V-Jets use shorter takeoffs, climb more swiftly, have greater range. It costs no more to fly the best. So fly Qantas V-Jet to America, Europe, Asia, the Orient, Africa, around the world. See your travel agent or Qantas. Australia's major bowling award for women is made to a delighted Pearl Sullivan from Melbourne. First prize check in the ladies' division of 500 pounds and a replica of the Ladderwood Trophy. And here's the big moment for our second national all-star champion in the men's division, John Pitch. Presentation of £1,000 cash, a trip around the world, and the fabulous Don Carter trophy. Well, at least... Um... <laughs> Mr. Farina... Mr. Farina tells me that uh, whilst they haven't worked it out completely, John Fitch has averaged better than 200 uh, right over the series, which means that he should be able to go to Chicago and pitch something back for us. <laughs> this is a replica of the Don Carter Trophy, and it is the hope of Blacklock Industries the promoters of the Blacklock 10,000, that John Fitch will be one of those who will, in future, emulate Don Carter's record. At least this will be something to remind him. Five times world champion. We hope this will start you on the first stage. Crabben, Mr. Perina, Mr. De Levine, uh, and many others that I could not possibly name. I'm too excited to name them. <laughs> Firstly, I would like to thank, and I feel sure on behalf of each and every one of us that bowled in this tournament, all the scorers, the people behind the scenes, and various members that gave their, themselves and their time to help each and every one of us bowlers. Next, I would like to thank five people, they'll know what I mean, Mr. Bart Cousins, Mr. Levine, Mr. Eric Jang, and two others who I will not name. I, I just don't know what to say, I just can't believe it's true. But I am very, very excited and I would like to congratulate Pearl on a ma magnificent job she did in the women's division and I would like to thank each and every fellow here. There is one thing that cannot be overlooked. I would like to state this now. In each of the matches and in during the pinfall series and the matches particularly, not once did I come across a fellow that was not a good sportsman. Thank you. After the presentations, we had Joe Farina ask John Fitz what his feelings were after winning Australia's Premier Bowling title. Congratulations, Jan. It was terrific bowling. How does it feel to be Australia's new champion? I'm very astounded, Joe, but it's fantastic. Wonderful. And uh, how, how do you feel about the tournament itself? Well, it was a pretty rugged grind over the four days, wasn't it? Well, right throughout the world, bowling, as you know, has run on this type of format, and this is our, our first uh, opportunity at it, and it's grueling, it's very tough, and these boys just don't give up. They just want to keep going. Uh, not so bad. 
Now, you rolled many great scores, uh, many astonishing scores during the course of the four days of bowling, but uh, in the third day of bowling, you had a tremendous string of strikes, John. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, there was 13 of them, Joe, but they were in the wrong game. There was uh, five on the end of one and eight, I think it was, on the start of the other. And uh, I would have loved to have been holding my hand out for that thousand pound for the 12 and a half. Well, you bowled well enough to get it, John. How did you feel this morning after last year's champion, Eric Jang, brought himself up from 11th to second place? Very, very windy. I understand you're also pretty prominent in other sports. A-grade tennis, A-grade football, a stunt ice skater, water skiing, medalist in ballroom dancing. How did you ever get into bowling? Well, about three years ago, I happened to see a magazine on it and got a bit curious about it and got intrigued with it, actually. So I decided to study it, and well, here I am. And there he is, John Fitch, winner of the Blacklock 10,000-pound National All-Star Singles Championship, our new champion.